Hi everybody, so today I'm going to be talking about the phases of gastric secretion and there's actually three phases to this, okay? The first phase is the cephalic phase, then there's the gastric phase, and then there's the intestinal phase. So like I said, today we're going to be talking about the cephalic phase. So let's go ahead and get started. And if you notice, the cephalic phase, cephalic means head. So what does the head have to do with the digestion? We'll talk about that in just a minute. This phase starts with the smell of food, right? If you smell food, it also starts with the sight of food. It starts with the thought of food. And it can also be initiated with the taste of food. Okay, so these things will actually start this phase and we'll explain what happens in just a minute. But before we do, in this phase, what's gonna happen is this, in this phase, you release one third of all gastric juices that are going to be released are released in this phase, right? So, it basically lasts just a few minutes. The reason being, the reason this lasts just a few minutes is because two things are gonna happen. One, you're either gonna start eating, and then when the food hits the stomach, you move into the gastric phase. Or two, you're gonna go on to something else and you're not gonna eat, and this phase is gonna end. Most of the time this phase takes place while the food is in your mouth, okay? So let's go ahead and look at what, what happens here. Like I said, we saw, call it the cephalic phase, right? So it has something to do with the head. So let's talk about this. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just gonna draw a brain, okay? And this is a brain. And then coming out the brain, I have the brain stem. There's my pawns. And this is going to be the medulla oblongata. So let's look a little bit at my brain here. And around the brain, the outer part of the brain, you have unmyelinated fibers, which we call the cerebral cortex. Okay, so where you see the orange, that's going to be my cerebral cortex. Okay, now, What's going to tell the cephalic phase is going to start here if we see food, right? So the sight or thought of food. Okay? So the sight or thought of food, it's going to start off with the, in the um, cerebral cortex. Let me just make this a little easier to see. Okay? So now in the brain, we also have something that we call the hypothalamus. So this is going to be my hypothalamus. Okay, there's my hypothalamus right there. And then what's going to happen is if we, if we have the smell or taste of food, the smell and taste receptors are going to send signals to the hypothalamus, right? If it's the sight or thought, the cerebral cortex is going to send signals to the hypothalamus. So here's my signals going to the hypothalamus, right? Now, in the brain stem, we have, in the medulla oblongata, we have something called your vagus nerve. Okay, so I'm gonna, this is my medulla oblongata down here. This part here. If I were to put, draw the spinal cord, I'd be drawing the spinal cord right here. The spinal cord actually connects to the medulla oblongata. And then, like I said, this is the beginning of my vagus nerve. Okay, that's the beginning of my vagus nerve. So now, the next thing I'm gonna draw is the stomach. So I'm gonna put the esophagus right here. And I, I don't know why, but I always draw the esophagus when I'm drawing the stomach. And this is my stomach, all right? And so in the stomach, we have different cells. We have something we call mucus cells. Okay, and mucus cells secrete mucus. We have something that we call parietal cells. Parietal cells are going to secrete hydrochloric acid and something called intrinsic factor. 
Now, intrinsic factor plays a role in the absorption of vitamin B12. So this is gonna play a role in the absorption of vitamin B12. Then we have something that we call chief cells. Chief cells secrete an inactive enzyme that we call pepsinogen. Okay. Now what's gonna happen is pepsinogen is going to bond with the hydrochloric acid and become activated. So the pepsinogen bonds with the hydrochloric acid, it becomes activated. And when it does, this becomes pepsin. And pepsin is responsible for breaking down the polypeptide bonds that are inside of proteins. So we start to break down proteins. And then another type of cell you have is an endocrine cell. And endocrine cells are responsible for the release of gastrin, okay? So now, coming from my vagus nerve, I am going to have sympathetic, I'm sorry, parasympathetic fibers, okay? And these fibers are going to go to the submucosa plexus, okay? And these are parasympathetic fibers. Okay, if you recall, parasympathetic fibers are responsible for rest and digest, right? Sympathetic is responsible for fight or flight, right? So this is going to activate these. So the submucosal plexus is going to activate these here. Okay? And what's going to happen is I am going to get an increase in the amount of mucus being produced. I'm going to get an increase in my hydrochloric acid. I'm going to get an increase in the intrinsic factor. And I'm also going to have an increase in the amount of pepsinogen. All of these are going to be produced in larger quantities and in my gastric. So once again, the cider thought of, of smell of food is going to cause my cerebral cortex to send signals to the hypothalamus. The cell, smell or taste receptors are gonna send signals to the hypothalamus. They, the hypothalamus is going to send a signal down to the vagus nerve, or to, and then the vagus nerve is gonna use parasympathetic fibers to send signals to the submucosal plexus which is going to basically activate all of these cells, and that's how your uh, cephalic phase works. Okay, so thank you so much for watching.